Hi, I'm Bobby Balicki from the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, better known as NEMA. Thanks to the U.S. Department of Energy, we are proud to present Bids for Grids, new media for the energy workforce. In partnership with George Mason University, Northern Virginia Community College, and NEMA members, we've developed a series of short educational videos introducing electrical equipment that's used in the smart grid, the electrical grid for the 21st century. This series is going to present a dozen of the most important products that are critical to a smart grid success. Our mission is simple, to make you more aware of smart grid technologies and help you consider a career in power engineering. This edition of Biz for Grids takes us to Hackettstown, New Jersey, where we will visit Thomas and Betts, who manufacture connectors, a vital part of the smart grid. Welcome back. We're in Hackettstown, New Jersey, about an hour west of New York City, home to Thomas and Betts Connector Manufacturing Facility, where the temperatures are dropping, but the manufacturing is heating up. Let's go take a look inside. In the power distribution system, you have cables that carry the power from one point to the other. And then once the power gets there, or you run out of cable, you're going to need a connector to either connect two pieces of cable or to connect that cable to a piece of equipment. And that's, that's where the connectors come in. And we have connectors all the way from 5,000 volts up to 138 kilovolts for transmission circuits. And these are all underground circuits in, in the Thomas & Betts portfolio. In the, in the context of the smart grid, it's important for the system to be reliable and to be efficient. Those are the main goals of smart grid, and reliability has to do with how often your lights go down and for how long are the lights out. So the better you are at preventing outages and making the outages shorter, the smarter your grid is. The connectors connect all the components in the grid. Without having those connectors, there wouldn't be a grid at all. Those connectors have to be reliable, and we do 100% testing, and our design always takes into account that those connectors have to be reliable, no maintenance, and then they have to be there for over 30 years, connecting those cables to equipment or cable to cable. A connector at its core is basically just an extension of the cable. It has the same elements. So it'll have a, a conductor, a metal conductor, that's um, surrounded by some type of insulator. And then that insulator will be coated with a semiconductive coating that can be grounded out for safety. It's the same type of technology that we use whenever we're molding anything, like our fuses or our switch gear. The design and manufacture of connectors has changed pretty significantly. From a design standpoint, Connectors started off as a basic device that just really was an extension of the cable. So relatively low voltages, and they weren't capable of making or breaking with any kind of load. That's what we call dead front. As the years progress, there are now many designs that are available that can do a lot more than that. Smart Grid is really all about gathering information and getting that information from a remote source back to some hub and then taking that information and automating a response to that information. So focuses on, on new connectors moving forward. There's a, a drive to try to make smarter connectors or smart sensors where the connectors will actually have embedded within themselves the ability to monitor fault currents or voltages or other aspects. And then that data can be sent back to the hub um, where decisions can be made. There's also a, a large need for new connectors for the greener, more environmentally friendly markets like wind power and solar. They have higher needs, higher demands. It's a trickier product to make, so we've had a large focus on those too. The design and fabrication of connectors is a pretty long process that involves a lot of different departments. We start with a design that comes from our research and development group and the manufacturing engineering group works with them to design molds and equipment and we produce that, build it and what we do is 
We take it down into our production facilities and the materials are what we call injected or, or compressed under high pressure inside these molds and it's allowed to cure or solidify. After those parts are finished in that process, we then you know, it proceeds through the rest of our quality assurance process and testing to make sure that a, a quality part gets out to the end user. The quality assurance process is, is key to the connectors uh, because when you're connecting all the different components of the smart grid, you want to ensure that they only have to do it once. In our facility, before it even leaves and goes out to the end user, we quality assure the product throughout the whole process. We electrically test 100% of the pieces that go out to the end users, and then we audit those processes throughout to ensure that we're monitoring and, and keeping a consistent process. You know, advancements in manufacturing engineering has, has always been key in Thomas & Betts. We've always worked real close with research and development, so as they've pushed the envelopes with their ideas and designs, it's forced us to be innovative in how we're going to fabricate and make the products that they've thought up. So we've been able over the years to really develop new materials that we've used in our products. Um, we've made a lot of advancements in our manufacturing capabilities with new equipment and new molds. And you know, we're, we constantly are driving towards just new and innovative ideas on the production floor to make products better, faster, and more efficiently. I'm here with Al Borgstrom, Vice President of R&D for Thomas & Betts here in Hackestown, New Jersey. And we're in the middle of a on-site testing facility. It's pretty impressive that you have an on-site facility here. Al, tell us a little about this. Uh, well, it's, a, it's number one, a great benefit to us. Uh, and we develop a lot of new products for the grid, uh, and the development time typically takes a long time to do that. Uh, but with the in-house capability that we have here at the lab, you know, the material sciences and the high power and substation, uh, that gives us a good jump on, on a lot of our development projects. It cuts the time considerably, so we get to market a lot sooner. A lot of times, if you don't have the in-house test facility as we do, you number one, costs you a lot more time, but also it, the time that you lose is spent in going to an outside lab a number of times in the development of that product because it never usually works the first time. But having our in-house facility enables us to make sure that when we go to that outside lab, we're almost sure that the first time we'll pass that test. So it saves us a lot of money in outside lab time and saves us a lot of, of, of development time as well. The industry sees smart grid creating a demand for jobs in engineering because there is a lot of technology and a lot of applications that are used in other industries that have not been applied to the power industry in communications, in electronics, in materials, in analysis of systems. Those are things that are maybe used in other industries that haven't been applied to the electric power industry and there will be jobs available for those types of new ideas and disciplines that go into the power industry. Today we learned a lot about connectors and the importance they have to the smart grid. Without connectors, we couldn't connect to the smart grid. From Hackestown, New Jersey and Thomas and Betts, on behalf of NEMA, I'm Bobby Balicki.